Okay, ready to go here. We've got the fork and the vise. Um, I'm gonna put it down slowly. Now there's a part to here that a lot of people don't know about or I don't know. Uh, push it down all the way. Go ahead and slide it in. You'll feel it uh, start to go in and then you'll feel a lot of uh, resistance. It's not going down. Well, the one thing you have to do, and I learned uh, this by trial and error, is you need to release, and I should have thought of this, I mean, it's probably common sense, you need to push in the trader valve because that's air pressure. So once you do that, it slides right back in. Real easy. It's all the way in now, and I would actually keep the trader valve pushed in until you've got this, uh, at least started these threads. And you can kind of get them started by just uh, twisting the whole unit instead of going down on that uh, that uh, lock, lock type thing, lock nut thing. So we've got it started, and I'm gonna go ahead and take my 90 degrees needle nose here and start uh, tightening it back down just like I took it out. Just be careful not to uh, hit the shaft or any of the bearing races. Uh, it's pretty difficult to actually hit those bearing races. They're not, uh, I mean, they're kind of uh, recessed in there. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, continue tightening this down and uh, we'll come back, stay tuned. Okay, the next step, just like reversal, these two little uh, pieces here, uh, a little indentation or what have you goes at the top. You just simply hold those, put those on there. Now they don't touch, so you wanna make sure you've got an even gap on either side. No big deal there. Show you here what I'm talking about. I don't know if you'll be able to see it. See how they snap on there. They just kind of sit there. There's the gap on that side. And yeah, we don't have a gap on the other side, so we needed to get a little bit more even. It's really not that critical. I'm just kind of uh, I'm just kind of anal with that stuff. So we'll get that a little closer. There we go. Hold those in there and then simply slide the rest of it up. And Looks like we're pretty good there. Make sure it's going down as far as it needs to go, and it is. And the next step would be to put this piece back on. This is the piece that we use the uh, tool to remove. And now we can go ahead and put it all the way on, but uh, we're not gonna tighten it up all the way, and I'll show you in a bit why not, um, if you've got a lockout especially. Go ahead and make sure you don't cross thread. There we go. We'll go ahead and uh, get this down, tighten it down a bit, and then uh, we'll be back and I'll show you why you don't want to really tighten this down all the way just yet, so stay tuned. Okay, we're back, as promised. Now, if you've got a lockout, the next thing we go on would be your lockout. We're gonna temporarily put it here. The reason why you don't want to tighten this down all the way is because those two metal uh, flanges, or those two uh, that we put on that we didn't, uh, you know, that kind of hold that in place, those are actually what control, that tightens the whole thing down and lets you know where your lockout's gonna be. So um, there's where the lockout would be completely locked and there's where it would be opened. Now, in relation to your fork, it depends on where you want it. You can see the fork's up straight and down now, uh, <clears throat> straight. So what I wanna do is I want the open position to be right here and the, clo or the uh, close to be all the way up here. So since I don't have this tight, a little bit too tight actually right now but this is why you don't want to tighten it down all the way because you want to uh, make sure you can still move this because otherwise you will not be able to move your lockout position hopefully that makes sense I know I'm probably not explaining it too, too well but sorry it's as good as it gets with me so let's see where our the key is you've got to have it a little tight but not too tight because if you don't have it tight enough it won't uh, hold the lockout. And if you're taking this apart, you'll know what I mean. It's kind of hard to explain, and I'm sure somebody on here can explain it much better than I am. But, okay, we're getting close. I'm gonna loosen it up a bit. See, when I turn that, it actually turns the lockout as well. And I want my lock out or, you know, to be all the way up. My open to be about right there. That's about where I want it, right there. So now that I've got that where I want it, I'll go ahead and tighten that down all the way. Like I said, it's kind of hard to explain, but uh, if you don't have a lockout, then you don't really need to worry about that. So there we go. 
and we're all the way tight now. So make sure we kept our position. Yeah, we did. So that's exactly where I want it right there. And I'm gonna keep it that way. So stay tuned. Uh, next, we'll actually be installing the bike. We're just about done, so stay tuned. Okay, I've just kind of got the bike sitting here in the stand like this. A little easier to put it that way. I did put a little grease on here. That's not a requirement. Uh, but to put it in, you want to get this as straight as possible into here. It's, uh, it goes in fairly easy. It's just this bottom bearing here, getting that part in. So once you've got it fairly straight, pretty far in there, they actually make a special tool, which I don't have. So we're going to go ahead and make sure you don't hit your straighter valve or anything like that. Go ahead and type tap on either side of the fork. And keep on slowly doing that per side um, until that pops in. It's not real, sometimes it goes right in. Um, actually, I might be able to push it in. Not quite, but it, it just takes a little finesse to get that in. It's not really a big deal. Um, Again, just tap it on either side. You don't want to hit the Schrader valve because you don't want to have to end up replacing that. So um, we'll go ahead and put this all the way in here and then we'll come back and I'll put the rest of it together. So stay tuned. Okay, the next thing I like to do is actually go ahead and uh, fill the shock up with air. You'll need to use a, uh, a, shock, a actual shock pump on this. You can't use a regular pump. Um, and go ahead and uh, just fill that up to the uh, whatever your weight is. Uh, you'll have to look in uh, your owner's manual, but uh, if you weigh like 160, 170, you need about 70, 80 PSI in there. So we'll go ahead and we'll pump this booger up, and then we'll go ahead and uh, after that and finish the uh, at the top. Stay tuned. Okay, moving back up top, I'm gonna go ahead and put the uh, seal back on. Just slides in place. And before you make the mistake of maybe putting the lockout on first or anything, you're going to have to go ahead and put your stem on, the way the lockout goes on there. Um, so go ahead and put that on. Next thing would become, uh, would you be your lockout here? Go ahead and slide that on. Then you want to go ahead and put your the nut back on that holds the lockout in place. And then the uh, last piece would be your uh, rebound adjustment with the, uh, the wrench. And once you've done that, uh, you're completely done, and that's all there is to it. So, uh, put the air in. You may need to adjust it. And, you know, sometimes the manufacturer settings aren't ideal. It depends on what kind of riding you're doing. If you're bottoming out, go ahead and put a little bit more air in there. If it's too stiff, go ahead and take a little out. So, that's about it. Sorry it wasn't, uh, you couldn't see a lot of it. It's just a lot of little details in there that you cannot see on the camera. So, but hopefully it gives you an idea, and you're not afraid to, to take one of these shocks apart now. So or forks rather. So stay tuned uh, for more videos and uh, as always, thanks for watching.